As a responsible person with growing concerns for your privacy and personal liberty, you want to know where we're headed and what you can do about it. We ask the experts what you need to do to take prudent and responsible action to safeguard your family's wealth and well-being and what basic first steps will help you to be aware and prepared. ReluctantPreppers.com Welcome back, Reluctant Preppers. We have an unusual guest today, Josh Kingdon, the COO of Sweet Potato Awesome. He's here with us to talk about a unusual store, long-term storage food that happens to also be uh, targeted for uh, snacking, meals, and health. It's organic, which makes it extremely unusual in the uh, long-term food storage category. Josh, thanks for joining us here on Reluctant Preppers. Uh, well, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. The first thing that occurs to me when trying to get people to, so we can all understand, uh, someone who specializes in sl- freeze-dried sliced sweet potatoes as a, as a long-term storage snack food and organic, how did you get into such a business? How does anyone get into such a business? Uh, okay, well, it is an interesting story. Um, I was inspired to uh, start my own business. I was, uh, I was actually in a, a Catholic seminary in Boston at a very specific moment in discernment and prayer that uh, where I felt like God was calling me uh, not to be a priest, but to actually become an entrepreneur and to be a gift to others uh, through a, as a business owner. Um, so after that sort of very specific moment in prayer, I actually moved back in with my parents and I started working in their kitchen. And I had a night, I had a, um, a almond flour cookie recipe. It was sort of a gluten-free sort of nutrient dense cookie with using some uh, maple syrup. Uh, it was very good got some good responses uh, behind it. But I was like, if if the almond flour works, then maybe maybe another flour would work because uh, oftentimes, um, you know, if you eat a lot of nuts, it can be sort of affect your digestion. And you have too many nuts, it can kind of uh, you, you can go nuts on nuts, so to say. Um, so I explored. I had found a, a sweet potato flour on a uh, sort of like a fitness website. And I tried that, and I sort of uh, sort of switched that out with the almond flour, and it worked really well. And so my thought was, uh, well, how do I produce this in larger scale? Because it wasn't really easy to find uh, sweet potato flour. And the sweet potato flour that I, I tried uh, wasn't organic. Uh, so it was very difficult to find a sweet potato flour that was organic. And um, I sort of come from a background of, you know, um, I've, I've always tried to, to eat really well. It's something I'm very passionate about, and I've always really connected with people that have sort of done the same thing. And so I wanted to figure out the way that you could preserve best the nutrients within the sweet potato. Uh, sweet potato is a, a superfood. It has a huge amount of beta carotene, among other uh, vitamins and minerals. And um, I said, well, how do I preserve that as best I can? And through my research, I discovered that the best way, the best preservation process for retaining nutrients and vitamins in a food is, is freeze drying. Um, but it's also a sort of an expensive process. But just about at the time that I was sort of um, coming up with this idea, the, the uh, Harvest Right company had come out with their freeze dryer. And uh, so I could buy a freeze dryer for a couple thousand dollars, which was still expensive, but it wasn't prior to harvest right you needed probably 15 or 20 or $25,000 for a small freeze dry machine um so i went out and i bought the freeze dry machine and i was just experimenting on you know uh making slices that i would eventually blend down into a flour but what i discovered was that doing the freeze drying yielded a really unique taste um and so i started to play around with um how I prepared it. And I started to prepare it as if, as if I was just making sweet potatoes for myself you know, at home out of the oven. And, uh, and when I tried that and put it in the freeze dryer machine, I came up with something that tasted, you know, awesome. And uh, so I, I, I stuck with it and I kept sort of, you know, uh, working on it and refining the recipes and the process. And uh, I basically determined that uh, it was a much more interesting product than a, than a cookie. Um, and also within the food industry, you, it, it's advantageous for you to have a food that has a really long shelf life. And uh, for my research um, in the freeze-dried food world, um, you know, when you freeze-dry a food properly and then you store it properly, uh, you can get 15 to 20 to, you know, I've heard even as high as 25 to 30 years of, of shelf life out of it. Um, so I really um, moved forward with that and I tried to 
try to get it to bring it to the farmer's market, but it was um, something that's very kind of difficult to do because most farmer's markets, I was in Massachusetts at the time, and now I'm in Nevada, but at the time um, when I asked them about bringing it to the farmer's market, they would only allow uh, dried fruits but because of sort of the biological differences between fruits and vegetables. Um, they wouldn't allow vegetables. Huh. Um, so ultimately I had, I sort of waited on that and I tried to find someone to, to produce it commercially for me. Um, and I moved out to Las Vegas, Nevada as sort of part of my unique discernment. When I had that moment in prayer, got to go to Las Vegas, Nevada and, 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 and start there. Um, and when I got out to Las Vegas, I kept trying to find someone to manufacture it, but eventually I was able to prove to the local health department that, um, the water activity level was low enough. I had to get a lab test. And so they eventually made a confession and allowed me to, to get out to the farmer's market and, and do it out of my home for just to get off the ground. And uh, then from after that, we built out our own facility uh, because our process is so unique. It, uh, it, um, it's not something that we could just go find a co-packer to do. Um, and uh, I've been producing the awesome and selling it online now for, for a couple months now. So. So that's, so that's the that's the genesis of the uh, sweet potato. You 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 uh, connected with us through a common friend, and uh, just uh, circling back to make sure that we get zero in on your on the why of this, your mission and your purpose. You're talking about doing something that's healthy. That was always a, a core value of yours in your entire life is is doing something that's healthy, and you also wanted to be a gift to others. And it sounds like there's this inventive, uh, innovative spirit that's that's entered in you. It sounds like what you're doing is you're actually uh, creating a whole, in one sense, it's a whole new category of, of, uh, uh, whether it's a, consider a snack or a side dish. Uh, it's, it's something that just doesn't, it kind of defies categorization into any traditional category. So it, it's really groundbreaking in that sense. Uh, yes, yeah, that's, that is what we're trying to do. And, and that's why we call it a slice, not a chip. Right? Most people look at it and they, and they think of it as a chip, but, um, you know, it, it the slice has a more of a healthier connotation to it. Um, and, you know, chips, you tend to associate that with your average potato chip. And, um, you know, what we're doing is, is something different and something unique. And so, uh, yeah, so we, we are trying to essentially create a new, a new category. And I, I think because of the nutrient retention of the freeze dry process, um, I think we're going to see, you know, within the next couple of years, it become even more popular. You see a lot of freeze dried fruits. Uh, in the stores like Whole Foods and, and a couple of the other grocery stores. Uh, you don't see as many vegetables, but you're starting to see them. I've seen some peas and a few other items, but I, I think um, I think that's going to be a, a growing market, and we hope to be sort of right on the, on the cusp of that. So. I have two personal touch points with freeze-dried things in my life, and one goes back way back into the uh, uh, mid to late 60s. My family uh, found this really great discount store where they could buy uh, different food items and my dad always wanted to be a little adventuresome brought home like a case of these packages of cornflakes with strawberries actual uh, freeze-dried strawberry fruit in the in the box and I was so looking forward to it I was I looked on the cover of the of these boxes of cereal and of course the way they show it in the picture there's the bowl and it's just covered with these red strawberries you know so we opened up the box it looked in there and it was cornflakes and you go down 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 cornflakes cornflakes and way on the bottom of the box there was like four little fragments of, of freeze-dried strawberries but boy did they taste good <laughs> and then I remember also as a as a, a boy scout on both backpacking and uh, canoe trips um us bringing along a variety of of uh, camping food, and there was a whale of a difference between the dried fruits or or dried things versus freeze dried. And I I made a mental note that the freeze dried was just you know leaps and bounds uh, more uh, flavorful. And once they were reconstituted, it seemed like back true to life more than than something that was either obviously canned or or dry or just air dried. And uh, so those are two things that I definitely took away kind of this positive attitude from my growing up years towards freeze-dried things, but it remains a bit of a mystery to me how it even works. Uh, I certainly have experienced a, fun, a funny, you know, when you put something in the freezer and it gets freezer burnt, you leave it too long and it kind of dries out or whatever, but but what exactly is the freeze-drying process? What, How long does it take and what is the actual process? Well, essentially it, it is, uh, you take you know, the the food product that you're, you're freeze-drying and then you 
you bring it down to a very, very low temperature, uh, minus 30, minus 40 degrees, so it's very, very solid. Um, and then you pull a vacuum. That's why you're, you're, there's some sort of vacuum pump required. And so you pull this very, you know, basically create this very high atmospheric pressure uh, inside a tube. Um, and then that, it, it's called uh, sublimation. And it basically pulls out the moisture. It goes the, the, the moisture goes from solid to gas without becoming a liquid. And that allows you to uh, basically maintain the shape of what, you, what you're freeze drying. And it also, because you're just pulling out that moisture, uh, it, it allows, uh, you know, more nutrient retention, essentially. Interesting, because, you know, in general, the, the thing for healthy food, most people think about the minimally processed. But in a sense, this is a way of minimizing because you're not exposing a lot of those delicate things to heat, which can destroy a lot of a lot of real volatile um, nutrients. That's very interesting. There's, there, there is still some heat involved, um, I guess, more specifically, you know, most, not all freeze drying. You could strictly just use the pressure and the freezing, but most freeze drying or commercial freeze dryers, they will, they'll heat it up intermittently in between in the middle of the uh, pulling a vacuum, but it's at a, at a low temperature, you know, say, you know, maybe at the most like 130, 135 degrees. It's a, it's a pretty low temperature. So, you, yeah, you're, you're not going to get uh, something burnt, you know, that way. Yeah. So. And uh, you have a variety of products. You must not have started out with all of those that are right out of the chute. Maybe you did, but can you tell us about what, what the variety of products you've got? Well, uh, the, the first flavor that I came up with was the original Awesome. And uh, it's original because that was how, well, it's the first flavor, but it was how I always made my own sweet potatoes. You know, I just uh, throw them in the oven with some coconut oil and some cinnamon and a little bit of sea salt and, uh, and just eat them up, eat the slices up that way. Uh, so that was the first flavor I came up with. And then uh, just uh, through experimentation and asking around, uh, uh, I've came up with uh, Deliciously Awesome, which is sort of a more savory sort of flavor. And uh, with garlic and dill and sea salt, uh, all my sweet potatoes are, are baked in coconut oil. Um, and uh, and then I knew I had to come up with, I'm not a spicy uh, fan. Uh, I don't like spicy food in general, but I knew I had to come up with a sort of a spicier one. Um, so I brought uh, a number of samples to the farmer's market with different seasonings and different spices and had some, had some fellow vendors and some customers try them out. And I, I came up with uh, Hot and Awesome. Uh, which uses a, a chipotle powder uh, in addition to the garlic and dill um, and the sea salt. Um, and then through some through some more experimentation, I came up with uh, Chia's Awesome, which is basically just the original Awesome, but add uh, chia seeds, organic chia seeds to it. And they stick really well, uh, pretty well to the actual slice itself. Um, and then the the last flavor that I had come up with, was which was Flat Out Awesome, uh, which is very similar in size and shape to a, um, you know, like toast or sort of like flatbread. Uh, that's why I call it flat out awesome. Cause I take a large jumbo sweet potato and slice it the long way, uh, as opposed to like a dime cut and then, uh, bake it in coconut oil and sea salt, uh, and then freeze dry it. Uh, so, and, and a lot of my customers like that one cause it's got an, uh, a slightly sweet taste to it. Um, but it also, if you, if you don't like, if you don't like a lot of seasoning, it, it's got sort of a, a more neutral flavor. And so it works well as sort of a, a substitute for bread or toast as well. So, or just by, just by itself, a lot of people like it that way too. And one of the products that you shared with us, uh, wasn't even sweet potato at all. Yes. Uh, well, uh, the, the beets are a similar, it's a root vegetable like the uh, sweet potato is. Uh, very nutritious um, and, uh, you know, relatively easy to process. That one uh, is, a, is a beet that's boiled. It's an organic beet that's boiled. And then I'll I add some uh, sea salt to it. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of diversify, you know, what I had. And, and it sort of fits into the same category as a sweet potato in the sense that it's a very healthy uh, sort of root vegetable. So that was my, my thinking there. And uh, we'd uh, like to talk a little bit about some of the you, you sent us a number of the, these different samples and we had actually six different products and five reviewers from two generations uh, uh, testing them at two different settings and uh, I would like to walk through some categories of, of feedback and uh, 
and give people a better understanding of what what uh, real world experience we had, and then you can share with us some other uh, recipes or combinations or things that other people have given you feedback. I'm sure you've gotten quite a bit of feedback from your uh, people who've purchased them from you. Sure. Yeah. And I, as, I, as I tell my customers, I'm open to good, always open to feedback, good or bad. So. That, that's how that's how uh, a lot of uh, ideas become even better ideas. Um, so uh, the first category we put it to was uh, the uh, the integrity of it. And organic uh, gave it a five out of five score there across all reviewers. Uh, there's a high value uh, among these reviewers of uh, organic valuing organic and saying that's extremely important. And it's extremely rare in both ready to eat and in long life foods. So five out of five for organic. Cool. Uh, next category was healthy in general, and that got four out of five. Uh, one tester would prefer uh, the op- if if there could be a redu- way of reducing the fat, but most of the testers emphasized the health benefits of the sweet potatoes. Do you want to expand on that before we go on? Why specifically sweet potatoes? Well, the, the sweet potatoes, um, they're in terms of vegetables, there's there's really not any other vegetable, including kale, that has as much beta carotene. And beta carotene is just one of those um, super beneficial uh, nutrients. <clears throat> you know, it's good for eye health. It's good for overall cellular health. Um, it you know it's it's just it's just a great uh, great nutrient to have. Um, you can also get there's also manganese within uh, sweet potatoes, uh, vitamin C, um, a lot of fiber. Um, so, but really, beta carotene is what makes sweet potatoes a, a sort of a nutritional superstar, if you will. Okay. Next category was quality. Uh, you got we got uh, five out of five from all of our reviewers on quality, um, mentioning attention to detail, the uniformity of the and the thickness of the slices, the uniformity of the doneness, uh, the impressive attachment of the chia seeds, <laughs> and the uh-huh. and other flavorings. So the uh, the attention to quality. It seemed like these were crafted, not just you know just cranked out of a factory or whatever. And uh, next category. And I guess if you'd like to chime in on any of these as I go through these, go ahead and if there's any comments you have that would add to. Uh... Oh, well, I'm glad you glad you appreciated the quality because we do we do work very hard at that, and it's, it's going to be something we're going to really as we grow and expand, we're going to you know make that a point of emphasis to try to grow and expand with uh, you know keeping very close uh, close to the quality that we have right now. So okay, if not better. So uh, next one was about. Uh, premium freshness packaging and that was uh quite remarkable um i can't help but remember uh my grandpa uh, complaining to me when he would buy bags of potato chips from the uh grocery store how many of them were crushed and broken in the bottom of the bag and he said you know that's not what i bought this for but this uh the packaging was very sturdy and it protected the contents uh, significantly we that was scored at 4.5 out of 5 that because there was just a few uh broken ones in the flat out awesome container but uh almost all of the other ones in the smaller for format were uh, intact and uh just uh, so that was a high, very high score for a premium freshness packaging, and also just the, the. Um, I guess we'll get back to it next. We have a second a category later on about long life. So, but the freshness was 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 great. Well, I was just going to just say that in regards to the sort of uh, solidity of the product, and um, it, it it's a root vegetable, so it's pretty sturdy. I mean, you can compare it almost to a carrot. We've we've discovered that the dime cut ones, which are basically all the 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 um, flavors except for flat out awesome, uh, they travel very well. Um, and we pack them, you know, we pack them in mylar packaging, um, and we use a food grade uh, nitrogen gas to purge them to sort of further protect them. Um, so we, those those travel really well. Uh, the the flat out awesome travels as well, but not as well. Um, as the other flavors, we're working on trying to find something, some sort of even better packaging that will allow us to, to send it without, without it breaking, uh, uh, yet as, a, as you experience. So, um, but, uh, but yeah, the, they do just because of the nature of a sweet potato, you'll notice a, a sweet potato, which is different than a regular potato. It's just, it's just more, more dense, uh, because it is, it's a root. Um, so yeah, it's good to hear that you, you, uh, that you experienced that. So. 
Next uh, category was texture, and there was a range here, uh, 3.5 to 4.5 out of 5, uh, because two of the testers couldn't get fully behind the freeze-dried feel, which is interesting. One reminisced, it remind, reminded him of astronaut ice cream from his childhood, which is a self <laughs> science museum. But three out of five noted the pleasantly surprising combination of the initial snap and right-sized crunch, followed by a more substantial body when you're uh, continuing to chew and just reminded one of the slogans that was in some of the product literature is that it's a slice, not a chip because it was, it came in much better than the expectations that were based on people's familiar experience with those hard woody, like banana chips or most dried fruit, uh, leathery kind of things. But this was a very unexpected combination of, of the just right snap at the beginning, followed by some more substantial chewing. So it was, it was a, Again, it's almost like it's a whole new category. You don't even know what to compare it to. So, cool. Any f- comments from you on the on the texture uh, observations that our team made? Uh, well, that 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 has been fairly common. A lot of people are, you know, it's so important for us to get people to try them because I, oftentimes people uh, have a, a when they think of freeze dried food, they have a preconceived notion about it. But oftentimes, there's so many times they're at the farmers market and. Somebody will walk by and I'll say, would you like to try some? And they go, oh, well, I don't like sweet potatoes or I don't like freeze-dried food. And I go, oh, no, 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 just, I, I, <laughs> you know, come on over, give it a shot. And, uh, you know, nine times out of ten, they'll walk away saying, you know what, you're right. It, it, was, it was different. It was different from what I thought and I really enjoyed it. So I've had, I've had people who tell me that they, they really didn't like sweet potatoes and then they walk away with a bag afterwards after trying them. So, um, yeah, so that, that's great to hear. The next category was flavor. Uh, also a range there from 3 to 4.5 out of 5. Uh, some wished for more differences between the varieties, and others appreciated the differences they did find. So what we were finding here was that different taste testers were actually sensing, they were actually tasting uh, differently from each other. So some of them really picked up on the on the differences in flavor. And for some, I think this is my my impression, my takeaway from that, was that for some, the the whole experience of the product was so novel that that's what they noticed the most, and therefore the subtle, more subtle differences between them was less evident to them than for those you know who kind of got past that that initial surprise off the bat, and then were so were, were kind of fine tuning in on the different flavors. The next one was value, and this was um, in one spec respect the lowest score of the group at three out of five um, score, uh, clearly and firmly in the premium price tier, which would be above range for most like price conscious daily lunch uh, potato chip type replacement. But then there's the health aspects to consider. And we've certainly had like uh, Joel Salatin of Polyface Farms on here, who's a big advocate for the uh, virtues and the the holistic way of looking at like going local, uh, raising your own food, going organic, going free range, that kind of thing. And, and he talked about we don't look at the all-in cost when you're looking at food. If you look at the health costs and your how it affects your energy level, how it affects your mood, how it affects your productivity, how it affects your <laughs> your health care. Um, and if you consider all the aspects of it, you got to con- you got to weigh the health aspects in there when you're looking at at the value picture, not just what's the cheapest thing to put in my mouth today. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I it, it is absolutely there. You do pay pay a premium for it, um, but I think um, it's 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 a unique product. It, it does the freeze drying process is is not is not it, it's it's an expensive process and it's a it's a labor intensive process. Um, and also, I think if you compare. If you go into a Whole Foods and you look at organic uh, freeze-dried fruit, for example, uh, you'll see prices ranging from four to to five or six dollars per ounce, um, and they usually sell it in a one-ounce container. And I sell it in a two-ounce, you know, my small size, the two-ounce container. Um, and also for the beets, if you look on, if you go to Amazon.com, the old, there's only one other company that I know that sells a organic freeze-dried beet, and, and they sell a one-ounce package for twelve thirty-nine. Um, which is really, really expensive. Um, so it is it is a very expensive process, and part of the sort of the mission that I'm on here is to to popularize freeze drying um, so that we can and, and grow it and scale it so that we can reduce the price and so you know that uh, more people can have access uh, to something that that that, um, that does retain a lot of the nutrients. And uh, you know starting out when you initially have a product, you're going to reach a small segment of, of the population that's willing to, to pay for something like that. Yep, 
early adopters. That's yeah, right. and, uh, and Pe- people who want to share share your vision. Yeah, and uh, and I, I'm a big fan of Joel Salatin. I've I've seen him speak before, and I do remember him uh, mentioning that. You know, uh, I think and something to this effect that you know, I think people just uh, uh, have gotten to the point where they they um, they don't. They expect food to be really, really cheap, and in reality, when you look at all that goes behind farming and the development of food and the processing of it, um, it really should be a little bit more expensive than than I think what we've kind of been preconditioned to. And because you know, you know, when they mass produce potato chips in these large factories, uh, yes, you can run, you can you know, drive the cost down, but there's also a cost in regards to nutrient retention and the value of the food. And uh, I think what we're seeing nowadays is, uh, especially among millennials and sort of younger folks, uh, a return to, you know, paying a little bit more of a premium for a higher quality product. Um, and obviously my, my product is not for everybody because it is very expensive, but we hope, um, we hope to, to be able to scale it so we can drive the price down. And, and there is the extra added value that it's a survival food. So you can buy our product and, and store it away. I use a five uh, mil thick uh, mylar packaging and, you know, a nitrogen, uh, a food grade nitrogen gas purge. And so um, in our initial, we've only been around for a little while, but our initial sort of uh, shelf life studies have been uh, very promising in regards to storing it for even in uh, very hot conditions, uh, we've had some good results uh, in our initial sort of shelf life uh, study. So, so the next quality or the next uh, aspect that we considered in the test in the product review was utility, and it, uh, we got a four out of five uh, score for utility because of its versatility. Uh, we said it would be useful both in upscale or casual uses. It'd be home at home, accompanying a wide range of meal or snack presentations because it's attractive. There's a, there's a variety of colors and textures and shapes involved, and it's so unusual that it, it's you know when you think of something that's that sometimes you go into a restaurant and they make like a a flower out of carrot shavings or something like that and they're, they're working on making something artistic to just as a garnish but you could definitely add both color texture shape and, and interest and excitement to any presentation with these because they're again um, they strike the eye and uh, but heck they're not just a garnish they're they're a side dish right there with your right there with your main experience or just a snack by themselves so utility uh, high score yeah, we, we liken it to uh, to a cracker, you know, because of sort of the, the sturdiness of it. You know, it allows you to dip and scoop things and, you know, put cheese on it. Uh, and in, in the case of the Flat Out Awesome, sort of use it as a sort of a, a toast or a flatbread sort of item. And so, um, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's very unique in the way that you can use it because you wouldn't be able to take a, an ordinary potato chip and, you know, scoop, say, some, some ground beef uh, the way that you could with uh, with our slices. So. Yep. Yeah. That's, it's again, people, unless they experience it, won't realize why this is like it's its own category all by itself. Um, the next, uh, and in fact, that leads to the next topic, which is uh, interest slash uniqueness slash novelty. Again, scoring five out of five for that. And the comments were not your everyday chip experience it, and doubles as a side dish. So, uh, <laughs> and, and uh, so high scores on uniqueness. And I think you just, that's what you were just describing. And then the last category we had was emergency preparedness and storage aspects. Uh, scored a four out of five there because of the expected exceptional shelf life. And uh, a comment, what else is going to satisfy your family's snappy tooth after 20 years in storage? Not chips or crackers. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> kudos uh, for this new category. It, and that's one of the interesting comments that people don't think about. We've heard this from a number of people who've talked about emergency food storage. Um, they talk about storing the basics, storing bulk rice, uh, you know, purged in, in, in nitrogen or dry, that kind of thing, uh, storing a lot of uh, various uh, nuts and dry proteins and things like that. But when people, one of the concerns that they talk about if you're in any kind of extended situation is the lack of uh, interesting flavors, colors, and that sort of thing, and uh, that you can only go so far with just your same old, same old, you know, salty, bland, beige uh, emergency food diet until you really start to appreciate something that that uh, shakes things up a bit. That's just human nature. So this is that's an aspect that people thought about is that this would definitely bring some interest uh, to um, to otherwise what could be you know a, a, a emergency type situation. So um, one. Uh, 
idea, and I don't know how practical it would be, but just to throw it out there uh, as a possible improvement opportunity, is that for emergency long-term storage, the gas pressurized packaging, which is uh, does such a good job at protecting the product, does take up quite a bit of space. So it's a little bit difficult to store a, a quantity of this compactly and wonder if there's any possibility in the future of considering some kind of a vacuum pack stack or something like that to where you could get a, a lot more uh, product density for the storage space. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's an interesting, uh, interesting point. The, from, our, from our experience in doing the vacuum uh, packaging, and there might be a way that we could sort of arrange the slices or use a different you know, form of packaging, but oftentimes when we do the vacuum uh, packaging, they the chips, uh, the chips, the slices tend to to um, to, to break. Um, so, but maybe there's a different way that we could do the uh, the vacuum packaging. So, but that's a good point. It's something something worth exploring. Yeah, one one thought that occurs to me, and I know it's a completely different form factor or product, is you can go buy like you know um, organic uh, ground coffee or whatever, and you can buy it in a brick, a vacuum packed brick that has a similar kind of a heavy mylar. Uh, packaging, but it's as it's as dense as a brick. By golly, when you when you cut it open, it kind of breathes in, and now you now you get this loose, uh, pourable stuff. Now I understand that there's no danger in that case of them. Nobody can crush ground coffee; it's already it's already crushed. <laughs> but in this case, if there was some way, yeah, either by stacking or having some kind of supportive whatever something might be an idea. But anyway, that was an idea to to kind of get the density uh, so people could store more in in a smaller space. That's all. Okay. No, thanks. That's that's helpful. So the overall, you average all that out, and you get an overall review score of four out of five, which is a solid uh, score. So we were we were quite impressed with, and thank you for providing us with those samples so that we could uh, we could uh, do this review for our viewers. And um, that leads to the next question, which is if people want to find out how they can experience Sweet Potato Awesome, uh, how do they how do they find out? SweetPotatoAwesome.com, and uh, you can. Check out each one of our flavors, and uh, there's a number of different pictures uh, with each flavor, uh, showing the various ways that you can eat it with, uh, you know, cheeses and hummus and chocolate and ice cream and uh, almond butter or nut butters. And I, I have uh, 10 videos on there. We hope to expand to uh, eventually uh, 333, but right now we have 10 uh, in 10 different ways to eat the awesome. Uh, so uh, I invite your customers to check out SweetPotatoAwesome.com and and uh, and and just uh, learn more about the awesome. Well, Josh Kingdon of SweetPotatoAwesome.com, we just wish you all the best in your in your ventures. Uh, anybody who's out there uh, doing what is good and doing it well and doing it with integrity and doing it for the right reasons and being open with people and and open to their uh, suggestions and their uh, impressions and perspective is worthy of serious uh, congratulations and recognition. So thank you for what you're doing. Keep up the good work. And uh, frankly, it was a bit daunting for us as we looked for emergency food storage options for our own family. So much of what's out there is so uh, commercially just uh, just filled with either you know ingredients you don't really want or it's really not healthy to start with. And certainly organic is as rare as can be in this genre. So thank you for what you're doing, and uh, we would be delighted to have you back another time if, uh, once you have other uh, things that, that you'd like us to know about when you've innovated some additional uh, products or approaches or that sort of thing. And uh, and thank you just once again for joining us here on Reluctant Preppers. Uh, well, thank you so much for having me. I, I appreciate all the feedback, and uh, and hopefully we're we're starting a, a new movement where we can create some 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 healthier, tastier, uh, freeze dried options for for the for the consuming public. So, but thank you so much, Dunning. I really appreciate it. You bet. Take care. Okay. Bye bye.